Divinity Original Sin 2 is in full swing, and one of the major issues players are having with the game is builds. What build do I use? What's a good build for a warrior? Ranger? Mage? Etc. Since the game is rather difficult, this has come much more into focus than one would expect. In this build guide, we're going to cover the Electric Lone Wolf build, Storm Chaser. Let's jump into this build and see just how it works. The Storm Chaser is an exceptionally high damage build that relies on air damage to stun its targets and dodging to avoid being struck by weapon attacks. Storm Chasers can also silence their enemies, making them have no choice but to attack with their weapons, which will then be dodged. Storm Chasers need very little physical armor because of this and really only need to deal with magical attacks, but only when their opponents aren't silenced. Playing a Storm Chaser requires very high air resistance because air damage has a pretty good chance of finding its way back to its caster, you. Storm Chasers focus primarily on intelligence to help increase their air damage, but also need some wits and memory to help increase their critical chance and initiative, as well as help them slot the larger volume of skills they will need for this build. Storm Chasers should focus on intelligence throughout Act 1, only putting points into memory as necessary. Once they reach the middle of Act 2, they will start to add points into wits to increase their critical chance and initiative. Storm Chasers utilize intelligence-based armor, which is exactly what you want with this build, as 90% of the damage you take should be elemental. Storm Chasers will use skills that allow them to dodge most physical attacks, and so shouldn't need much physical armor. Players should look for armor that has Arrow Thurge or Intelligence on it to help increase their damage, but they will also need armor with a fair amount of air resistance as well. Finding a chest armor and a shield with rune slots can really help in this regard, because you can drop thunder runes or frost runes of power into them to increase your air resistance. As far as weapons go, you'll want to use a wand and shield for maximum armor. You won't ever need to attack with your weapons, so we'll take a wand here just because you'll have the correct attributes for it, and they generally give a bonus to intelligence. Always pick the one with the best bonuses, not damage. Shields will help keep you alive and will allow you to replenish armor on yourself. They also come with rune slots, which will allow you to not only increase your air resistance, but also increase your damage via intelligence if you use a frost rune of power. One of the hardest parts about making a build in Divinity Original Sin 2 is getting your abilities distribution correct. It's easy to get spread too thin, and often people make the mistake of not spreading points around enough. The bonuses you gain from abilities in this game are somewhat different than the original, so it's easy to see why people can get confused. Let's take a look at what abilities and talents you need for a Storm Chaser. Storm Chasers want to focus on Arrow Thurge trying to max it out as quickly as possible, as this is their main source of damage. Storm Chasers also need 2 points into Huntsman, 2 points into Necromancer, 1 point into Hydrosophist, and 1 point into Warfare. All points not allocated to these things should be dumped into Polymorph to increase intelligence or wits if intelligence is maxed. This will allow for the proper skills needed for this build, as well as keeping damage as high as possible. As far as talents go, I'd recommend the following. Lone Wolf. This talent makes this build possible, so it is listed here first. You can play this build outside of Lone Wolf, but it doesn't work as well. Executioner. This should be the second talent you take, because it works really well with this build. You'll need one point into Warfare to get it, but it's worth it, as it can trigger once per round. Savage Sword Leash. This talent is a must for this build, as it allows your spells to critically hit. However, you won't need it right away because you won't have much critical chance early on in the game. Take this around the beginning of Act 2 if you can. Mnemonic. This talent works really well with this build because you'll be using many skills that require two memory. This one will help ease the burden of points into that attribute. Hothead. Another very good talent for this build since you shouldn't take a whole lot of damage. Can really help to increase your critical chance. Far Out Man. Will increase the range of many of your skills by two meters. This isn't the greatest talent for this build because you're trying to get close anyway, but it can help you reach that one target just out of range normally. Elemental Affinity. This talent would be listed higher if it wasn't so hard to maintain. Electrified water or clouds are not hard to create, but you have to constantly move with this build to hit the desired targets, and they don't generally like to walk in these things. Now that you've decided which talents and abilities you want, you'll need to identify just which skills work best with this kind of setup. Storm Chasers will use nearly entirely Arrow Third skills with a couple of miscellaneous skills from other lines. This allows them to deal maximum damage and focus on what really matters, shocking the shit out of everything. Since builds evolve over the course of the game, I'm going to put the skills in order from earliest obtainable to latest, because you won't be able to get them all right away. Arrow Third Skills Blinding Radiance This skill is one of the many AoEs this build possesses that also applies some sort of negative status effect, in this case Blinded. Unleash it on as many targets as you can at once. Also grants 20% air resistance, which is nice. 
Electric Discharge, a decent range skill with okay damage. Use this when you can't get in range to use closer proximity skills, or to finish off a weak target who is far away. Shocking Touch, does about 10% more damage than Electric Discharge, which isn't a whole lot, but it's still better. Use this after you've used a good AoE skill to finish off a remaining enemy. Erratic Wisp, an excellent 1 AP skill that increases your air resistance by 40%, which is what you'll really use it for. The fact you teleport when struck is just an added bonus. Vacuum Touch, deals air damage and sets suffocation and silence. This skill is another reason you want to be close to your targets. Silence will force the target to attack you with a weapon, which will then be dodged. Uncanny Evasion. This skill is one of the few defensive skills this build has, and this one is a must. For 1 AP, you'll be virtually unhittable during the enemy's round, except by magic spells. Get this one as soon as you can. Teleportation. A great all-around skill both in and out of combat. You'll use this during fights to move enemies into range so you can AOE more than one target ideally three or more. Evasive Aura. We use this just like Uncanny Evasion for the dodge chance. Costs one more AP than Uncanny Evasion and also costs one SP, so it's not as good, but still necessary to keep from being hit. Vacuum Aura. This skill is absolutely awesome and is a must have. Costs two AP and one SP, but can stun, shock, silence, and suffocate enemies in a huge AOE. Silence as many enemies as you can so they are forced to attack into your high dodge chance. Dazing Bolt has a hefty cost at 3 AP, but deals substantial damage in a small AoE. This skill can often one-shot enemies if it crits. A great way to get an easy kill on turn 1 or 2. Superconductor, really good damage in a large AoE around the player and only has a 3 turn cooldown. This is a great way to stun nearly every enemy around you in one turn. If not, follow up with Vacuumara to silence and or stun them. Chain Lightning. Hits up to 8 targets and has extremely good range. The damage on this skill is also higher than all but closed circuit, which has a very small AoE. Use this when you can't seem to get close to your targets. Miscellaneous skills. Rain. Makes targets wet, which increases your air damage to them, and stuns enemies who have already been shocked, or allows targets to become stunned instead of shocked. Can also help create a surface for elemental affinity. Armor of Frost. A great way to buff your magic armor. This is good because it's mages that you really need to worry about since melee and range cannot hit you easily. Tactical Retreat. This is a great skill to close the gap between you and your prey. Also grants haste which is just fantastic because you will need all the AP you can get. When you start a fight it's a good idea to lead with rain to make targets less resistant to air damage. Note this will also reduce yours as well so be sure you have good resistance to begin with. I like to use Erratic Wisp at this point to buff my air resistance by 40% which really helps you not kill yourself. Then I follow up with Tactical Retreat if I know I can AoE a few targets by doing so, but if not, then I use Electric Discharge or Dazing Bolt to try to eliminate one target quickly, and then use Uncanny Evasion. If I jumped in, then I'll cast either Blinding Radiance or Vacuumara and finish up with Uncanny Evasion. On turn 2, I either use Vacuumara or Superconductor for another devastating AoE. Use Teleportation beforehand if you need to move more enemies into range. Then I end with Evasive Aura so that I cannot be struck for another enemy round. Then turn 3, it's another AoE if I need one, or pick off targets as necessary, or use Chain Lightning if they are spread out a bit. Enemies should be silenced, shocked, and stunned most of this time, so you'll hardly ever take damage that you don't inflict upon yourself. Storm Chasers do devastating damage and stun so many targets they can be a lot of fun to play. The danger with this build is that you can easily wipe out all of your magic armor or stun yourself if you aren't careful. This is one of the reasons you need to stack air resistance when playing one, and one of the reasons a couple of arrow third skills grant air resistance. You also have to watch out for your party members when using this build because you could easily electrify them, which is why I recommend playing a lone wolf. I also suggest, if you're playing duo, that the other character is some sort of ranged character to keep them out of harm's way. You can add opportunists and play this build with a staff if you desire, but there are a couple issues with it. One, you don't usually get many uses of it per fight because things die relatively quickly anyway. Two, this sort of build is short on talents as it is because there are so many ones that are good, so you'll have to sacrifice another great talent for this one. Three, you'll have less defense without a shield, leaving you with extremely low amount of physical armor, which you shouldn't need, but you never know when things might not go according to plan. If you do use a staff, however, I recommend adding Whirlwind for some extra AoE. 
Lastly, ideally you want to play this build as Beast because he comes with the special skill Blinding Squall, which also does air damage and blinds targets in an AoE. Another good choice for this build is Elf so that you can make use of the Flesh Sacrifice skill. You can play this build as any race, but those are two that I would recommend. Be sure to check out our other build guides on our channel for each archetype, Warrior, Ranger, Mage, Rogue, and Summoner, with more build guides coming every week. Good luck, Sorcerers. Rivlon is counting on you.